and uh, we're not able to retain things that we read, that we really can't concentrate when we read. All of these are symptomatic, not of just having aluminum in our brains, that's bad enough, but of being absolutely filled with nanoparticles, uh, all of which uh, reproduce by means of replication. So, um, to me, we've always had parasites, we've always had um, flora and fauna living in our intestinal tract that have more or less been our good friends. Uh, we've, we've always had the micro world within our bodies and around us. But this is the first time, to my knowledge, that we've ever had a man-made uh, device uh, that has been loosed into the environment and all of which, now you might think of them as just being sort of wild critters, little tiny wild critters that just kind of go. No, they are mostly controlled by uh, microprocessors. Believe it or not, they may only be one billionth of an inch, but each of, of I mean, uh, one billionth of a meter, but they each have uh, in them a tiny, tiny computer that uh, connects them with uh, the, uh, what I call the laptop toys, the people who are on laptops in uh, various fusion centers or, or uh, intelligence agencies or NASA, NOAA, etc., where they can be uh, programmed from a distance, they can be activated, they can be uh, made dormant. They are absolutely controlled remotely. And um, what they operate as uh, is a, a swarm consciousness. Now, this might be hard to wrap your heads around. They have a consciousness, not an individual consciousness. They, they are all, what a, what a nano uh, particle is, is it is, um, the manufacture of matter by putting one atom at a time next to each other and making them fuse. Uh, I know that's impossible for you to imagine that at the atomic level that they could be making something so tiny as this, but that is exactly what is happening. Um, so atoms and molecules are now building blocks of nanotechnology and they're super cheap to do uh, and they can pretty much be made to do anything they can fix things uh, they can build things from nothing it all depends on their programming and that programming is happening remotely so where I first saw them in action because I knew a lot of theory but I hadn't really seen them in action that was when you had your California fires. When, in fact, it was the Santa Rosa fire. Someone uh, took some really good drone footage of uh, the Santa Rosa fire, and I was watching it for maybe the second or third time, sort of just seeing how how it would be possible for one house to be burned and incinerated and another house standing and how the trees were still standing and as I'm sitting there contemplating these things I, I suddenly noticed that the embers what I think are embers of a fire are sort of crawling along the ground and uh, they're, they're going in a, a sort of pattern sort of a, a wave-like pattern as if, as if radio frequency were controlling them and, um, uh, so what you're know. saying, so what you're saying, Alana, is that the embers are nanobots. Is that right? Yes, they were a swarm of uh, of nanobots uh, heading for yet another place where they were being directed remotely. So I I saw how they move as a unit, and um, I'm sorry to say that that's how they are in our bodies. Now, here comes the 5G. Let's uh, finish up with the 5G. The 5G is a millimeter wave technology. It is a weapon technology. 
Um, I will spend some time on it in this third and last book I'm writing on this topic. Uh, and um, the, the 5G I call in the second book, I call it the linchpin of the uh, space uh, fence lockdown. Mm-hmm. And by linchpin, I mean that this will, this will assure that uh, we are absolutely plugged in and available for uh, control on, on many levels. Um, we, we've heard a lot about the small antennas. We've heard a lot about how the 5G can't really peer through walls. Uh, we've heard a lot of misinformation, a lot. Uh, and it, it just takes a while. I mean, that's what researching when you're dealing with national security issues that uh, you are not being told about and you're being lied to about uh, as, a, as a form of cover. This is how you do the research. You kind of let, you got to let things sit a while so that you can uh, see what other people say, uh, think your thoughts, go to sleep at night, kind of ruminate while you're asleep. And, um, and this is how I, I work, along with a, a ton of reading, of course. But um, uh, this, this 5G uh, will uh, be able to, it'll, its primary job is to be uh, an interface with the uh, Internet of Things. They may be the AIs, too. I'm, I'm thinking that I'm seeing some stuff up there that look like AIs, you know. Um, and I'm thinking that maybe some of these are AI creations from China that are beginning to come to life up in the, uh, the clouds. Maybe they're under some kind of control, uh, by another country that's going to attack us with these things. I, you know, that's what I'm saying. I, I think when I saw the dragon series, which is not up on Instagram, I don't know if they'll let me put it up there, um, We'll see. Um, But the Dragon series that I have up on my two blogs, the fact of how it was programmed to open its eyes right before it's starting to, you know, fade away, because that was the last picture I took, because right after that, it went away within like three minutes. Um, And it's, it's, it's almost like it was rolled out to us to see some kind of mechanical AI thing coming to life up in the sky because like I say what I saw was the skin change from clouds to some stone substance of marble or something it was a different surface it it was not normal and so I'm saying that I think that people are maybe in danger because I think that this could be a, a collusion of China with these AI forms of life they're not real life, but they're they're a form of some kind of life, um, you know, programmed. I'm thinking maybe that the Chinese may have something to do with this. Um, <laughs> I know I'm sounding like the paranoid Russia communist thing, but, uh, you know, I, I have some evidence based now on Bill Gates. I think that there's a spirit of communism that's satanic and that people become infected by it, and they don't even know. And so, you know, why... The uh, the government doesn't uh, you know uh, indict Bill Gates for his um, uh, what do you call it um, betrayal uh, colluding with the foreign enemy of the America. I mean Americans are are the ones who are always under the magnifying glass uh, being considered terrorists or whatever or enemies of the state. While people like Bill Gates can go out there and collude with. Our enemy, China, is our enemy. And uh, they're an atheist, godless, brutal regime. And they they are nothing to mess with, and you don't go over there and flirt with China. Good afternoon. This is Cheryl Merrill. It's uh, April 28, 2020. And uh, the opening clips are what I you know, am presenting as the information that has come to me naturally through natural, you know, ways that I haven't really done a lot of effort, made a lot of effort to research. It just came to me, okay, through this Deborah Taveras website. I just happened to see this. I wasn't looking for this information. In fact, I'm noticing that when I put out questions, 
about things. You know, I'm trying to deduce what is the source of these unusual cloud formations that look like there's someone at the helm directing them. Now, I know it's not God. Okay, I know that, that if men are involved. Um, and God may be intervening some way in my interpretations of them, but right now I've got evidence, evidence from someone who's a researcher who did a book about it, one of the few books about what's going on up in our skies. Um, she didn't particularly deal with the issue uh, because the book was written a few years ago with what I'm addressing right now is the acceleration of unusual cloud formations and my witnessing and photographs as I've, I'm putting up on Instagram. So far, I have only up to early 2018 uh, when I had my cataract surgery around that time. So I had been blind for about six months before I got cataract surgery and pretty much blind in my, you know, I couldn't take photos of uh, clouds I could see very clearly. So uh, in the year 2018, I didn't start snapping photos, uh, really uh, accelerating them until um, about mid 2018 up through 2020. And so I've been able to get some really unusual photographs that I haven't been like hunting clouds or anything. I can prove it because they just appear in front of my apartment window above the Bay Area. So I'm not sitting here hunting clouds, okay? I'm not like intense about finding clouds. Uh, they just happen to be timed when I look out my window. I'm uh, right now on lockdown. And the first real wave of clouds that I saw that were highly unusual and, and crazy was March 26th, triggered by another earlier event of the day of the announcement in San Francisco. They were locking down, uh, but not for the next day. So everyone was like in a traffic tra jam trying to get home. And on March 16th, uh, 2020, and I just happened to know, I forgot about this photo. I just happened to catch a photo of it, a one photograph of it, as it hovered in the sky. And it was on the day of the shutdown. I kind of put it in the back of my mind. And for to be honest, when I went back to find it, I thought it was 2017. That's how insignificant I thought this cloud was. But then when I realized... I found it in 2020, and it was actually only a couple weeks ago in March 16th. I realized, wow, that was the day of the shutdown, and I saw this huge pig head in the sky in the distance that I got a quick snapshot off before the, the light turned green. And also, not only was it a pig head, I saw the snout and the, the mouth open. It looked like there was something clinging to its head, and it actually looked like in the distance like some kind of bird with a wing and that it had captured it and it was like subduing it. That's actually the interpretation I have. It's not just a pig's head, that, that it was more than that. It looked like an angelic white cloud figure that was um, grasping on to having caught a pig's head. And the pig's head was, was dark and the white clouds were angelic. And so in the distance, it looks like these uh, some angelic figure was clinging to the pig head okay so yeah it was uneventful because it was just so far away and it wasn't a great photograph of it there was a partial blockage of the sign but I did go home and see it and I thought oh that's kind of weird but now that I know that it's the timing of the lockdown that gives it more significance you know it's just, it's historic to me because it has some kind of timing of the shutdown which is really a house arrest of all of us uh, it's, it, what, that's what it is. It's it's uh, some kind of power taking over, trying to take over our lives. That's how you can interpret it. Now, the the fact that we haven't been released from that, and they don't really have any plans to release us in the near future, in my opinion, I think they they're going to keep us under lock and key for the. I'll, maybe they'll never let our country back again because there's a communist takeover, in my opinion. So, with that said. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, just a little bit, share with you about how in the earlier clip that I, I didn't play, there's another clip that I wanted to, but it's just too long. I would, I'm going to put um, the, the video link in the description so you can listen to the entire thing. Uh, these nanobots, nanotechnology, we breathe in every day. It's sprayed into our atmosphere we breathe it in every day. So we're full of what she said 
are tiny little microcomputers in our bodies. And I've had some unusual experiences with those microcomputers, especially after my eye surgery. That I, I, uh, I think it was before I went to sleep. I've been, no I was noticing that um, my mind is picks up on things subconsciously in my environment, and then something within me that I believe are these microcomputers um, um, reassemble them into like um, an animated program. Because I actually witnessed after my surgery, I thought these were the contact lenses themselves. That's what I suspected was some software program opening up with a red light. And uh, it was a very fine red light, you know, having not been able to see very clearly for a, long, a while. Uh, to see a fine dot of a, like a laser light dot practically in my eyesight. And then one of those whirlies, you know, when you open up a program... Like I have a Roku Whirly where I open up my Roku uh, on my monitor and it just, there's a little Whirly. Well, I saw that, like something was opening up a program in my eyes. And I realized what it was later, I, I've been able to interpret it as some kind of, um, uh, it, it's, in, it's happening in my brain because, because in this video it also talks about how these nanoparticles go past your blood, your blood, um, system um, into your 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 brain the the blood barrier it goes up into your brain so these nanoparticulates are in our brains affecting us we and the united states in particular has has a higher rate of them than like the uk they've measured it so what this means is that it can tamper with our brains and so i've been seeing things from these little micro computers and the fact that I can see what's going on in the clouds and, and interpret it the way I am may have something to do with the nanotechnology embedded in my body. It's embedded in all of our bodies. The other thing I wanted to say in that video, it's it's worth a listen. It's the fourth part of the series. I think that lady, uh, Alana Landfree, L-A-N-D-F-R-E-E, -E, I think that that's her segment of the four-part series of that video. Because I, I didn't watch the other three, but she's the most important one to me because she actually spelled it out for you in the opening clip what's going on, that they're planting things in the clouds, okay? And uh, they're spraying things in the clouds and they're able to remotely control them. And that's something that I described uh, in, in that video I did on April 20th, uh, actually the podcast I did on April 20th. Um, and so... Uh, I'll put a link to the video I have up of, of that as well if you want to hear to the whole thing. Or you could go to Sprecher and just go to my April 20th podcast called something about, I can't remember what, I, Dragon in the Sky or something. So now I know that these are being manipulated by human beings through remote technology of the nanobots. They're, they're, they have control in a remote area. And that's why I'm concerned that they have some kind of remote control uh, of my nanobots because of how they were able to um, open up a program before my very eyes. That hasn't happened since uh, because, you know, I don't think they want me to realize just how close they have they are monitoring me. But I, I, um, I can say that these, these things are supposed to actually also be accelerating with the 5G system they're rolling out. So we don't really know how very extremely dangerous this could be to to us. Yes, and I just wanted to mention it, that there's, read up on this lady's book about uh, nanotechnology and what they're doing in the clouds. And uh, check out the cloud clouds I have and some of my comments about what I witnessed of how the dragon's eyes open right before it disintegrated, you know, and how it seemed to be a program, some kind of computer program running, how it inflated from a flat dragon with a, a, a unicorn <laughs> horn on it, and then it, it, it inflated like a balloon you'd see in a, in a parade, and it was like the Chinese dragon. And they tried to simulate uh, the book of Revelation 12 of the... the woman riding on the back of the, uh, the inebriated woman riding on the back of the dra dragon. So they're running programs in the clouds. So essentially what they've done is they're, they're hacking clouds 
um, and likely their intent is to scare the population. And this could be China working with Bill Gates because Bill Gates is also responsible for spraying things up in the clouds, for facilitating having things sprayed up in the clouds. So Bill Gates is involved with this, okay? He's tired of his Windows programs. He, he, he left the board of Microsoft about six to seven, eight weeks ago. He, he resigned. Before that, he wasn't the CEO anymore. You know, he stepped down as CEO, uh, but he's been working with his foundation, setting up this crazy, crazy stuff all over the world. And he is, he's just out of control. He needs to be restrained. Okay, you see what he's doing now? Uh, he, I guess he doesn't realize what, how freakish this is for him. to be. He's like a freak. Bill Gates is a freak to be doing this to our environment, you know, and getting us shut down for his vaccination plans, you know, and chemical experimentation on us. So I'm going to put a link in the description, and uh, I, I highly recommend turning to Jesus Christ, accepting him as Lord and Savior. And uh, he, he, he wants me to get this information out. I, I'm one of the people who is going to help. Let people know what's going on. These nanotechnology bots are inside of us from breathing them for years and years and years, and they're going to hijack them, especially using 5G. I've already witnessed them hijacking them. Okay, I witnessed how they're tampering with my life with these nano uh, tech things in my body. I've noticed it, and it's affected my brain. And probably they have, uh, I'm not going to speculate, but I'm just saying it's very serious. So really, turn to God, accept him, and he'll, he'll guide you out of this. You know, they may plan on killing me any day. I mean, maybe they have the ability to kill me any time they want. You never know the degree of control these people have because they're control freaks. But God will pull us through it. You don't worry about that. If you have Jesus in your life, he's going to pull us through it. So there's no worries there uh, getting to heaven or anything, which is the total goal is to avoid hell by following Jesus and knowing what he's all about, reading the word of God and obeying Jesus, and then also witnessing to others as I have. And I'm sorry if I sound crazy, but hey, if I sound crazy to you, I understand that. Okay, so why don't you just, you know, give it a little time and maybe... Um, listen to those videos and, and try to comprehend try, with your own experiences, okay? Because that's what I've been doing. I've been timing, coincidence, my own experiences. My, I'm putting it all together. My brain seems to be picking up on the environment around me on occasion and reassembling the, the, the information. Uh, and I had, I've had dreams that took things from my environment and animated them like a sewing uh, mannequin in the, in the window across the street. I have a photo of it, by the way. And uh, my brain took that up before I went to bed. I didn't realize I had really looked at that too much, but I guess I caught it before I went to bed. And then it turned into an AI pointing at me very hostily in a dream. Okay, it turned this mannequin sewing mannequin across the street looking out the window it had like a face drawn at it and it turned that into an animated ai in a dream pointing at me like it was um paranoid of me or something so anyway that's <laughs> i you know i i i i would appreciate you're not disrespecting me saying i'm crazy uh, because I have a lot of evidence to back this up. I have photographs of evidence. I have photographs of that pig head in the Mission Dolores that, and the date of it, evidence of that. I have evidence of every single crazy photo I've seen. Um, I've taken over time and, and a frame of time of like minutes or whatever. You can see it develop, how it starts out flat and how it's rolled out and how they make it look like aliens are involved. They, they put the alien creatures in it to make us think that they're aliens. When they're, No, they're men. They're men controlling it remotely of the nanotechnology, of the, nano, the nanobots. 